I think the tricky thing with the pandemic is that, you know, you don't really know. And yeah. so that's, I think that's, that's the biggest challenge and reason to say, okay, well, we got to make a call and, and we got to, we got to do something. Hey guys, Johnny Discolf here at the 2020 Waco Annual Charity Open with coverage presented by OTB. And I am standing here with the tour director himself, Mr. Jeff Spring. How's it going? I'm tired, Corey. Yeah, I bet you are. It's been a wild weekend on so many fronts. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like the obvious question is, the tournament's been canceled because of coronavirus outbreak, you know, pandemonium. Um, where are we at right now with the tour? Well, the tournament was shortened. Okay. You know, we did complete the tournament. Um, it was disappointing to have to cancel the third round. Um, and in terms of the tour, we are on a suspension until we get more guidance from health organizations and then kind of approval from the PDGA to resume elite series and major events. Um, can you walk me through a little bit about, a little bit, um, how did this how did this come to be because 48 hours ago 72 hours ago none of us i think saw this coming mm -hmm. um walk me through maybe the last two days like how did it get come to this yeah i think the first um is a series of announcements from other sports leagues that really triggered it um it's starting you know with the nba i think being the most no notable i that might have been tuesday night yeah um and then uh, a, a number of leagues followed suit um and then the big one was that we had decided on how to move forward um, and we were working towards limiting or prohibiting spectators and and we were going getting ready to make that announcement and then the PGA Tour which is a very similar sport in terms of disc golf you've got galleries you've got a golf course you got outside um, you know they advanced their rhetoric from uh, no spectators to we're canceling the rest of this event which was actually happening yeah. and the next five i think yeah, um yeah. yeah and i think that they are hoping for the masters okay. but they're not sure yet i'm, I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure but um maybe they did cancel no i think no they might have honestly i, I, they I don't it. yeah okay so you know i'm not exactly sure but basically when that fell everybody you know that was in involved in the conversation the pdga todd in myself um the event staff um, basically knew that there was going to be another discussion in the morning. Um, and so we delayed, you know, basically making that final call. It sounded, seemed like, and it was late at that, like discussions went very late. You know, um, I was up very late, you know, working on, you know, trying to just assess and, and craft the statement and, and understand what else was going on. And, um, you know, this morning the work kind of started early and we all powwowed and had discussions and came back and, and decided on this course of action, which it seems to me has, has worked out well. Um, I think the tricky thing with the pandemic is that, you know, you don't really know. And yeah. so that's, I think that's, that's the biggest challenge and reason to say, okay, well, we got to make a call and, and we got to, we got to do something. No, absolutely. Um, one of the announcements, the announcement that came out did have to do with uh, elite series, majors, uh, pro tour events, kind of everything that's clumped into that. But what it didn't mention or what I didn't necessarily hear about is the silver series events. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've got a couple down in Florida um, in this next like six week swing. Right. Where are those tournaments yeah. stand? So the PDGA guidance, which we're following, um, mentions non elite series and majors. Um, they're going to take local guidance from their communities, from their cities, okay. from their event teams, from their stakeholders, their partners. They're, of course, going to be able to reach out to the PDGA for guidance. Um, the Silver Series can reach out to us for guidance. The Tallahassee event is, it goes basically throw down, then back to Texas States, which is suspended. Yeah. And then it comes back to Tallahassee for us. Um, the Tallahassee event basically was suspended or delayed by the city of Tallahassee. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So they, they, you know, they're a huge, they're the biggest sponsor of the event. They're, they buy in. Thank you, city of Tallahassee, for supporting that team. We're excited to come. Um, and I hope that that will get rescheduled. And that may be a part of the Silver Series okay. if it does get rescheduled later in a window that works. But I, we don't know yet on that one. Um, at that point in time, you know, we're, we're one week before Jonesboro and then one week after Jonesboro's GBO, and we're at the end of the window. Yeah. 
Um, so it looks like that there's not going to be any DGBT point accumulation at least until May 8th through 10th, which is the Silver Series of uh, 303 Open in oh, Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. Yep. yeah, and that's an interesting one because it's also um, the global women's event. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, that's and fantastic. So, yeah, and, I, and like hopefully, you know, spring is sprung. Um, the global pandemic has eased. Um, everybody has taken the proper steps to, to get this thing under control and or at least feel, you know, better about its, the rate of its spread. Mm -hmm. um, and we can, you know, celebrate spring with a great event in Colorado and around the world for, yeah. for the women. No, uh, great, great points. I appreciate your perspective there. Um, I want to transition a little bit off of the corona filled chaos that we've been dealing with. One of the biggest storylines of the weekend, Brody Smith making his tournament debut this weekend on the live feature card. A, a polarizing decision. I feel like I've said that word 50 times this weekend. But um, what was that experience like from a tournament staff perspective? You know, it, it was it was not as polarizing on, as a, from a staff perspective. We have a procedure yeah. to set feature cards um, on our live card. It's always going to be the returning champion for men or women. Uh, it's going to be an event pick. Um, they're presenting our lead sponsors pick and then a DGBT pick. Um, the DGBT pick in the past has been a fan vote. Um, we probably will in implement a fa fan vote in the future, but um, so far we've decided to make a pick um, that we've wanted to make. Um, you know, Brody got into the event when his rating updated. You know, the DGPT does hold a spot um, at every event, a couple spots um, for our picks, you know, basically a, a sponsor exemption spot. And, um, you know, one of them was tagged for him uh, his rating got updated and he was in. And so then that that precipitated the discussion. Um, you know, after after, you know, talking to him um, and, and seeing if he wasn't sure if he was willing to do it or wanted to do it. Um, and so that was, you know, we were wanted to know if he wanted to sure. first. Um, and once we did, we kicked it around with the team. You know, we, we looked at other examples of, you know, feature cards, you know, and, and none of the other picks of like, you know, we've had tournaments pick, you know, friends of the event. We've sure. had um, amateur winners. We've had, you know, uh, folks that are, you know, in the low 900s in the past. And most of the time, that's not what the picks are because people want to put on a draw. Yeah. For But like, um, you know, in, in this case, um, we we looked at it and said, oh, OK, well, you know, this isn't the end of the world. We're going to we're going to pick him um, because we, we felt like he was going to be on feature card coverage no matter what. If you go down to the chase card, Jomez gets a pick. Yep. If you go down, um, or the other feature card sure, in the first, first round, round. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jomez gets a pick and then they cover lead. And then Parsave was here and whoever's covering Chase also has a feature card and they would get a pick too. And so if Brody was there, you know, um, I think from what we saw from fans of the game um, and from his, you know, his following coming and wanting to see it, um, we thought, yeah, you know, he's going to be seen. Uh, on some card, you know, and, and we'd love it to be on the live card. Um, and he was excited about it after consideration. Um, I think we, we had a little bit of trepidation, uh, and he did in terms of just, you know, feeling like there, there's this argument out there and I've seen it, obviously we yeah. know you said polarizing, yeah. um, that, you know, whether it's earned or not. And, you know, the, the, just the nature of the card, the, the feature card selection, um, there's not actually an, earning of yes. the spot yes. you could argue and I, and I understand the argument that oh somebody sponsored which he is um, you know uh, or somebody has worked their way up to be have fans and followers but in this case yeah I mean he is sponsored because he's a four-time national champion ultimate player yeah. so he's a prof he's been a professional in 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 throwing a disc yes. um, so you know we felt like with his dedication and how much he's been doing to try to encourage other people to play and how, how many followers were excited to see him, um, that it just, it just kind of made basic sense. So, you know, when you put that together and knowing that it's not necessarily like an earned per se thing, um, it's a selected thing. Um, and it is based on what people want to see, hence the fan vote, right? Yeah. If we put him in the fan vote, won. we think he probably yes. would have, but, um, yeah, he probably would have won. Yes, um, but yeah, so like, I, you know, I think that like, I definitely hear and agree with a lot of the arguments out there, mm -hmm. but for, for us, we just thought it was instead of being like this level, like 
you know, just a low level, you know, thing, you know, it's just like, it's not the end of the world. Sure. People might disagree or agree, but you know, I, I think when you say polarizing, I definitely saw it out there, yeah. but I, I, I just don't have it on my level of, you know, urgency as, yeah. as, as high as most people, because I've been around the game. I've seen all these feature cards and, you know, maybe people that are just paying attention now it's the start of the season, you know, and, and, you know, social media can, can cause, you know, opinions to get out there that, you know, can get, accentuated so well let me ask you looking back on it we're two and a half two days after it um how was the decision like was was it was it a good decision from a business your own business perspective yeah so absolutely it was a great decision because i think it inspired a lot of people to watch live Uh, a lot of people subscribed Mm -hmm. um but it was also i think good for the game because the vibe out here was great (laughs) people it was like i you know, like I remember, I'm a big golf fan, like traditional golf, and like I, I've, you know, I can't. Nece- I'm, Tiger wasn't necessarily my favorite player, but I can't. You, sometimes you can't help but root for him. Yes. You know, you're like because it's like something special's happening. You know, in 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 for the game, and I kind of felt that for the first time in yeah. disc golf. I, like I wasn't glued on his his round or anything, but I was following and in the holes I saw of him. I was like, oh, make it, you know, and, yeah. and the whole crowd felt that way. Yeah, exactly. You know, like they wanted him to succeed. Um, they wanted him to enjoy it. They, they, I think they were like, this is kind of this this figure that has a different presence. Yeah. And, and that's why I say, you know, like obviously there's so many differences f- between him and like someone like Tiger and the PGA. But just in that vibe that everybody's kind of pulling for him, whether or not they really <laughs> he's their favorite player, yes. they're like, oh, do well, because that's good for this game, you know. And so. We saw that at home. Um, we saw that on the live uh, broadcast. You know, I think we got up to, we got to run the numbers, but we, I think we got up to 4,000 concurrent viewers through the paywall, oh, wow. which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. And actually, you know, I'm happy to share. Um, at first, we didn't know if we wanted to, but, you know, we're proud to say that we uh, are, I think we just hit 6,500 subscribers, which is insane. No, and hold on. Thank you so much. Pause, because we just did an interview two weeks ago. And you were only comfortable committing that it was over a thousand. Right. It actually was just a little over fifteen hundred at that time, but we, we we didn't know if like it should be a public figure or not. Um, but you know, I, I don't see why not. I no, think people I are agree. interested in I the agree. subscription service. Um, there's a lot of people that are upset by it, obviously. Um, but I think that that you know that number is very small compared to the people that are excited about it like you know i I think i saw some comments in the 200 person range and then after the announcement today we saw about 200 um, people uh, like you know cancel or pause their subscriptions because they're like hey there's no we don't know what's coming Mm -hmm. or you know i I, there was a technical glitch or you know i i you know was upset about something Mm -hmm. um but 200 versus the the still 6500 you know that that speaks to that people do like the the Smashbox Plus. You know what what the Disc Golf Network's bringing in terms of you know using a great base of, of talent and, and experience that the Smashbox crew powers the broadcast with, and then adding in our media team, Mo, Sam, Evan. You know you. Yep. Thank you for helping. Mm-hmm. Um, little known fact, Corey stepped in. <laughs> Sam, one of our our Catch Cam Sam hashtag Catch Cam Catch Cam Sam. He, uh, <laughs> he tweaked his back. Um, he's doing better. He'll be with us in the future. Um, and I think probably for other broadcasts, yeah. but Corey was a champ and stepped in and did some catch cam work for us, um, which was awesome. So, um, yeah, I think like having that, that consistency of camera, the improvement of one team working together, you know, having the broadcast crew where we have hosts and, and, and we have great world champions, you know, it, it all makes it, um, something that people are excited about to the tune of 6,500 Absolutely. subscribers. So, you know, we're, we're excited. Um, we definitely feel like, okay, no matter what happens, this is viable. Yes. Well, this is viable now. And it makes us want to reinvest. We hear a lot of people in comments and we hear the, the criticisms. And I just want to let people know, you know, we feel now that we can invest in, and make those improvements. And we want to make them too. Like we, we know it's not a perfect broadcast. Um, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. There's a lot of technical upgrades we could have. Um, but, you know, overall, you know, it, it's certainly certainly great to see that that subscriber count high. So, um, Jeff, there's I feel like 50 more questions I could ask you, but this is not going to be our last interview. No. So I'm going to put a pause on it yeah. because I'm getting eating alive yeah. by mosquitoes there's right now. Yeah. There's bugs all around us. Um, I want to give you a chance, though. Anything, you know, you want to say something to the fans, anything on your chest that you'd like to get out? 
Well, I don't have anything on my chest to get <laughs> off, but um, what I'd like to say is I want to thank our partners in the PDGA um, for being good leaders in this crisis and really working with us step by step. Uh, myself and Todd appreciate the uh, bugs. You're not Dude, kidding. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, we really, but we really do appreciate uh, the guidance and leadership and, you know, taking that step that we feel is great. You know, I, I also sympathize with a lot of the people who feel that this is overblown. You know, at, at this point in time, there's not a lot of other options when you're running a business or a big organization, a sports league. So I hope people can can understand it um, because, like, I, I, I can sympathize with, okay, hey, this is a lot of hysteria. Um, I think the uncertainty is yeah. is what is causing that and so i just want to say hey we're not going any bit where this is you know just kind of a pause to to see what happens and what transpires and it's in the best interest of folks and i think the disc golf community is strong they're wise and most people are uh you're on the same page and excited to to get cracking once the weather gets real nice thank you for your time yeah. really jeff i truly appreciate it um the mosquito bites tomorrow will let me know exactly how long we stood out here, but I'm a talker. Sorry. That's all, that's all we have for this interview, guys. If you'd like coverage of all things disc golf, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hey guys, thanks for checking out that interview. And thanks again for hanging out a little bit afterwards so I can shout out OTB. Only the best discs, they are fantastic at what they do. They list the flatness and firmness of every disc in stock, as well as $3.95 flat rate shipping on any orders under $75. Man, it's a fantastic deal.